Well, good day, dudes. I've had a couple of viewers ask if I could put together a video uh, just explaining how I dock the boat when I'm on my own. And it's a bit of a process. When I'm travelling uh, up and down the coast, it's great to have Wendy on board because it always makes it a bit easier when you've got crew on the boat with you. But this boat's uh, pretty well set up for um, coming into docks and docking uh, by myself. The first thing I guess is you've got to be pre-prepared. Before I come anywhere near a dock, I'll have my fenders set up, I'll have my priority line set up, uh, and I'll be ready to go. I'll do all that, sometimes even out at sea, half an hour before I, uh, before I come into a berth. Um, it's always good to know the height of the berth, but you've got a pretty good idea. And I'm talking about floating pontoons here, not uh, a fixed structure like a jetty. That's another kettle of fish. I might co cover that in another movie. But uh, I'm talking about coming into a marina berth that's floating or a pontoon that's floating. So the first thing uh, we should talk about is a priority line. This is the line that you'll want to get on uh, first up. And once you've got that line on, then you can control the boat. So um, if you're heading into the tide, your priority line is probably going to be your aft spring. Your aft spring is uh, a diagonal line that stops your boat moving backwards. So if you're coming into the tide, if you get an aft spring on, the tide will actually pull you back on that spring and you've got some control over your boat. And when I'm tying my fenders, what I like to do is put the fender over the side, hold the rope and get it to about the level uh, that you think the dock's going to be at and then I tie a rolling hitch. If you're tying rolling hitches, always finish them with a half hitch, otherwise they'll slip. There are other knots you can use, but a rolling hitch is one I know and uh, one I can do pretty quickly. The other thing is I need to have my lines on. So if I'm coming in to berth into the tide, usually always I'll have a stern line on. So I'll put my stern line here. That's on the cleat on the boat and safe. And the other priority line I usually use is some sort of spring line. The type of lines you find on a boat, there'll be a stern line, there'll be a bow line, there'll be spring lines, a forward spring and an aft spring, and they can also be a breast line. A breast line usually runs quite short from the side of the boat to a cleat, a pretty short line straight to the dock. I don't use um, breast lines very much at all uh, in my docking procedure or when I'm docked. I, I do it mainly off a stern, a bow and a couple of springs. Okay, so once we've got our fender set up or our fenders, I run four fenders along the side of the boat uh, when I'm doing any sort of docking procedure just to protect the gel coat. Once I've done that, the bitter end of my lines, I'll tie quite a big bowline in them. That gives me a loop at the end of the line. And with a loop, if there's someone on the dock, you can pass them the loop and say, can you just put that on the cleat? Uh, if you pass them the rope without a loop in it, they might not how to tie it around a cleat and tie it off. So I think it's always better to have a bowline tied in the end of the rope or a loop spliced in the end of the rope that you can pass ashore or the plan's going to be when I get to the uh, dock I'm going to drop that over a cleat on the dock and that's going to control the boat from from there on so whether it's going to be the stern line first or a spring line that's something I'll have to work out probably going to be a spring so the fenders are out the lines are set up now we're going to go in uh, to the dock and work out uh, where we're going to berth the boat. With this boat, because my helm is on the uh, port side of the boat 
and the door into the helm is on the port side, I usually try to dock on this side of the vessel because I've got really good access from the, from the wheel to where my lines are is only three feet. So I can step out, grab the lines, make sure everything's going right. I can keep an eye on what's going on. So I tend to dock always on the port side. That might mean reversing into pens in marinas, which is another kettle of fish, but can be done quite easily. This will be my spring line. And once again, I'm going to tie a bowline in the end of that line. Now there's a few things you've got to take into account when you're doing any docking procedure. The first thing and probably the most important is the state of the tide and what the current's doing. What's the water doing to your boat? Is it pushing you forward along the dock or is it pushing you backwards uh, along the dock? And in most circumstances it's a lot easier to berth a boat when you're heading into the tide. So if you're heading into the tide virtually on the throttles or with your throttle and your rudders, you can uh, usually just hold position and use the tide as a brake. So it makes it a lot easier if you're going into the tide. If you're going with the tide, and, and sometimes you will have to do that, then it's quite important that you get near a, uh, a bollard on the dock and get a priority line onto it because that's probably uh, one of the only ways you're going to control the boat. So the current we've got to be aware of, the wind we also have to be aware of as well. What's the wind going to do? It'll depend on your boat and how much windage you carry, how much um, of your boat is presented to the wind as how far sideways you'll go in certain conditions. But always when you're especially in a marina, it's really easy to find out where the wind's coming from because you've only got to look at the top of all the masts in the marina and there's a little wind vane up there with an arrow that points to the direction of the wind. So if you look up at the masts, you'll be able to see where the wind's coming from straight up and then you'll be able to allow for any windage when you're carrying out your berthing procedure. Okay, so they're the things that we really have to take account of. Depth is the other thing, I guess. Just make sure that when you're berthing near a jetty that there is a, uh, enough water there for your boat to float in and tides because you might be berthing at a jetty uh, with a high tide and at low tide there mightn't be enough water there for you to float. And there's other concerns you'll have if there's a lot of tide, especially if it's a fixed structure and you've got to use long spring lines and long stern and bow lines. Controlling the boat, there's a few things that will help you control the boat when you're coming in to uh, carry out a docking procedure. You've got your rudders, of course, and your helm, so you can use them. Now, rudders are very efficient when the propeller is pushing water over the rudder. So if that's your rudder face, your rudder will turn like that as you turn the helm. If the prop's here pushing water over it, when you're in forward motion, the rudder is very efficient. When you go astern with your prop and start sucking water over the rudder, it doesn't have much efficiency at all. So be aware of that. You get a lot more efficiency out of your rudders with the motors or motor going forward than you do with it going in reverse. The other thing is a thing called transverse thrust or paddle wheel effect. Now, it's a little bit hard to explain, but if your propeller turns that way, looking, and this is looking at it from where you're looking at it, so if it's turning that way, the paddle wheel effect, it's a bit like a car tire. If the, the propeller's turning that way, it's trying to pull the boat, the back of the boat, in that direction. Okay, so a propeller turning that way will have a tendency to paddle wheel the boat in that direction. When you go astern, turn the prop the other way, it'll tend to pull the boat in the other direction. So it's important to know what effect your prop has uh, when you go in reverse, because props are different. Sometimes they run left-handed props, sometimes they run right-handed props. So in forward or reverse, um, it can be quite different on different vessels. So it's important to know what the transverse thrust is on your boat. Um, because you can use that transverse thrust when you're coming in to berth your boat. On this boat, it's a catamaran. 
I have the benefit of having two motors quite widely spaced apart. My motors are probably about four metres away from each other. My props and rudders are four metres away from each other. So by having those motors spaced, by having two motors for a start and having them spaced quite widely, it gives you quite good manoeuvrability. And most of the manoeuvring I do in close quarters in marinas and coming up to pontoons, I'm doing it on the throttles, not so much on the rudders. I do use my rudders, um, and if I was coming into berth on this side of the boat, this is the port side of the boat, if I was coming in to pick up a berth on this side of the boat, what I'd do, I'd get close to the pontoon, I'd turn my rudders all the way to starboard. So I'd turn my rudder blades so they were facing to starboard, as if I was going to do a turn to starboard. And then as I'm using my motors to manoeuvre the boat into the dock, the starboard attitude of those rudders tends to push the boat, the back of the boat towards the dock. So if I'm using the motors, I've got one in reverse, one in forward, the motor that's running in forward is going to push the back of the boat towards the dock. The one that's running in reverse doesn't have much effect because, as I said, you're pulling water over the rudder, not much effect. But the one that's on the outside of the boat and is uh, the, the water's being pushed over it by the propeller, that will tend to push the back of the boat towards the dock. So you can get virtually on this boat in calm conditions, I can really move it sideways just with the rudders being set up and walking it in on the motors. So they're the things that you've got at your disposal to uh, help you get the boat into a dock. And you might use some of them, you might use all of them. I tend to use all of them, use whatever you can. But the point is, if you're going to do any sort of docking procedure, especially in marinas, make sure you do it slow. You shouldn't be coming out of an idle at any stage, okay? You should be in gear and out of gear, but just at idle. You might have to give it a little bit, but you don't want the boat to be moving quickly while you're carrying out these docking procedures because that's when you damage your boat and it's when you can damage other people's boats as well. Um, so do it slowly. Um, the, the best way to practice, I guess, is to get near a jetty or a dock where there are no boats around and you can just practice all day berthing your boat. And I'm sure if you spend a day doing it, you'll become quite uh, proficient at it and you'll have, a lot more, um, you'll have a lot more confidence in berthing your boat um, single-handed. Okay, here's, uh, here's something a little different for you too. Instead of having to tie a bowline in the end of your line to drop over a cleat, uh, if you don't want to have to learn that, and I find that this is a sometimes better method uh, of doing it, I'll sometimes use an old piece of halyard rope. This is double braid. It's quite long, but what I've done, I've got it uh, organised and doubled. So I've got a double um, length of double braid rope. Now what I do with that, I put that out through my uh, cleat and pull through a bit of it and then I can tie that off and then when I come into the dock I can just use this and throw that over the, just throw that loop over the, uh, the cleat on the dock. And then once it's on, I can adjust how long the, uh, how long the rope is uh, on the boat. So that's a rather good way of doing it.
Okay, so that's how I uh, tie up to a floating pontoon. But sometimes, if you travel a bit up and down the coast, you'll come to places where there's not a pontoon, it's actually a jetty with uh, piles that you've got to tie up to. So when you're going to uh, tie up to something like that, you've got to use fender boards. I'm in Lauriton at the moment, and uh, this is a, a stationary jetty, it's not a pontoon. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I've tied the boat up and what I've done to protect it uh, when you're tying up to a jetty. Let's have a look. So you can see I've got fender boards rigged down beside the boat. So the fender boards come up onto this line here. That's tied to the board. And then my fenders are in behind the fender board. So what that does, that allows the board to rub, rub up and down against the pile here and the fenders keep uh, everything off my boat. So that's how fender boards work. One at the front, and one at the back. So you've got to space them so that you're on the piles and allow a little bit for movement backward and forward with the tide. A bit of tide runs in and out of here. You'll also notice that where I'm tied up here, my lines my spring lines, this is my forward spring, it's quite long. It runs from way aft of the boat up to uh, the cleat amidships. And my aft spring runs from that same cleat a long way forward. So it runs up to this pile here. Also, my bow line is quite long. It runs from the bow of the boat down onto another pile. And also my stern line, I run it from the sheet winch onto the, on the boat and it runs a long way aft to the pile at the back here. Now why I keep all of those lines pretty long is because there's about a two metre rise and fall in tide here. So the boat's going to go up and down by nearly a couple of metres. And by keeping those lines very long, it means they can pantograph. So they can, they can move up and down with the boat. If you tie it up short, when the tide goes out, you'd probably end up hanging on a line. So by keeping your long, lines long like that, uh, that saves any problem with you uh, hanging the boat up when the tide goes out. Now, if you tie to a pontoon, it doesn't matter, of course. The whole pontoon goes up and down with the, uh, with the flow of the water. So if you tie to a pontoon, you can tie up shorter. But when you're tied to a jetty like this, it's always a good idea to leave all of your lines quite long. Don't tie up short because you will hang up uh, when the tide goes out if you're not careful. Okay, so that's using fender boards and tying to a structure. Hey, look, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, if it is, please give us a thumbs up, make a comment, or uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, you'll notice I've dressed up a little bit for the videos. You can buy these um, really good hoodies uh, on our YouTube shop. So go to Motor Sailing for Old Dudes, and if you have a look in the shop, you can buy a little bit of merch helps us out a bit. Thanks for watching dudes, see you next time.